Are you interested in scuba diving? We're going to find out all about it now. So today I'm joined by Andrew and Lucy, who are scuba divers, and they're going to tell us about scuba diving. So what are the main types of diving? Um, well, I guess you've got commercial diving and recreational diving. What we're interested in is recreational diving, diving for mm. fun. Um, you could be diving tropical waters or, as we do in the UK, um, in uh, colder, murky water. But basically the, what you're looking for is the same sort of thing. Some people are interested in the wildlife, the marine life, um, or it could be the wreck life or a bit of both. Um, the saltwater diving as well as freshwater diving, cave diving. All the skills that you, that, you, that you learn for diving are basically, you know, the, the same basics, but you might, you know, mm. depending on what your interests are, you might go down a different sort of um, a path and, and basically you, you, you choose what you enjoy the most, I guess. Cool. So how did you guys get into diving in the first place? Well, for me, it was travelling, same as for Andrew, but we, we learnt separately and uh, we both did quite a lot of tropical diving and having spent a bit of time abroad together, we came back to the UK and decided we need to see more of our own country and dive in the UK, which is a bit of a change because it's temperature change, equipment's a bit different, um, challenges are different. And so we learned with a different agency as well that's more geared up towards British diving. So. so if someone was interested in getting into diving, what would you advise them to do? Uh, well, a lot of people learn um, when they're on holiday and, you know, that's tropical diving. That's, you know, if you're at the beach and you, you've know, got a bit of spare time, you might be thinking, oh, I like the look of having a bit of diving. It's likely you'll learn um, with Paddy. Um, and their, their agency is more, more geared up to um, you know, diving when in, in tropical waters when in holiday. If you're interested in joining a club and doing some UK diving, then it'll be like our club at BZAC Club. And it's just it's the same skills, but it's more geared for UK conditions. It really depends how often you think you're going to be doing it, if it's just going to be a, like an you know, occasional thing when you're abroad um, you know, and you're in a nice uh, tropical location, or if you're going to get into sort of wrecks and... Uh, diving around the UK and uh, being part of a club as well. Is there any equipment that they would need? So you've brought some stuff with you, do you want to show us your stuff? Um, yeah, normally when you're, when you're learning you can, um, you can rent um, all the gear, certainly if, you, if you're abroad you know, they'll have um, you know, the cylinders and the weights you need. Um, the most obvious bit of kit that you're going to need for yourself is going to be say a wetsuit, but again you, you can normally rent those, but normally people say the stuff that touches your skin, that's the stuff you might want to buy mm. first. Um, UK, it's uh, a lot colder, so um, rather than diving in wet suits, we drive in, dive in dry suits. A um, bit more of an outlay there. So, but a lot of your your uh, initial stuff will be in a pool. So you'll be learning all the all the techniques um, in in warmer water. Lucy here is holding up um, BCD, which is a buoyancy control device. Um, you use this bit of gear um, to. To control your buoyancy in the water, this would probably be one of the first bits of kit you'd be um, looking at purchasing. But again, I'd say you get yourself on a course first, um, see how it goes, because the kit can be quite expensive all in one go, and you want to know if you're going to stick with the sport. Um, if you're joining um, a UK club, a BZAC club, then the chances are that they, they can rent you um, or lend you gear whilst you're learning, and you pick up advice from the people in the club as to what's the best gear to have. They'll always be trying to sell you some. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your top tips for people who want to get into diving things that they really should do or really shouldn't do I think firstly you've got to learn with a reputable agency do some research find out who you want to dive with um, you want to have a good time and uh, enjoy your diving and dive within your limits and uh, uh, progressive steps I think is yeah. something that BZAC are always trying to teach so you're not immediately going to dive down to 50 metres and uh, uh, find some deep wrecks you might start off at 10 meters you know and you, you get to enjoy get to learn all the basic skills first um, find your comfort zone and then slowly build up your skills and you'll find it a lot more enjoyable um, that's what we did and uh, we're always progressing always learning so it's uh, that'd be my top tip I think are there any safety things that you want to talk about um, yeah, I mean, you, you, you learn all your um, skills in the pool and basically everything that you learn in the pool, you then transfer into mm. the water. I mean, the main one is um, don't hold your breath, you know, keep, keep breathing. You've got the gear, you carry your air with you, um, keep breathing. Um, but don't, don't push the limits, you know, if mm. you're trained to dive down to 20 metres, 
don't try diving down at 30 meters you know maybe you're comfortable diving around sort of 10 to 15 meters it's perfectly perfectly good um, and I think keep refreshing your skills as well we're constantly refreshing our skills and trying them out in the pool and then when we get to the next level you redo those skills and practicing them together so you're staying current and fresh so what are the main dangers associated with driving I'm thinking sharks sound kind of scary but I hear that's not a real danger to divers? Um, well, different types of sharks, but um, I think you, you, you can dive with sharks, you know. I think we, we, we've all watched Jaws and we, you know, maybe grew up thinking that these sharks are going to be leaping out of the water at every opportunity and uh, eating uh, divers and surfers. But, you know, generally we're, we're diving in, um, you know, it's not our environment, we're, we're guests in a way, I suppose. Um, so, I mean, our, our golden rule is you're not, you don't touch. Um, you know, uh, any of the fish or, or animals. And likewise, if you're in um, an environment with a shark, you, you, you've got to respect its space. I mean, we, we've mm. done dives with sharks, um, uh, reef sharks, um, nerf sharks and that, and uh, they were more interested in getting past us and going to where they wanted to go and nudging us out of the way. And it, it, was, it was very enjoyable to be in their presence, um, but we're in their territory and that's all you've got to do is respect that. Um, Lots of people um, get into photography where they're diving, and uh, and that's that's a nice thing to do to be able to take some uh, photographs of these, you know, big beasts, and maybe change people's perceptions about uh, how dangerous they actually are. There's quite a move in the diving community as well around shark conservation, and there's the bite back campaign and various other campaigns to raise awareness in the general public about sharks and that actually they're not as dangerous as you might think they are. Um, thank you so much, Andrew and Lucy, for joining us. We're going to leave details of their diving club so you can follow them if you're interested in joining. Um, also, please like and subscribe and check out the other videos on the Ruby Tuesday. It's been really fun talking to you about diving. Bye! <laughs>